Okay, so in this part we'll focus on the executing uh, that recording itself and doing VFR flight in your sim. Just before you start you need to um, prepare your uh, FSX or prepare 3D um, with, uh, with good, uh, good t terrain data. It means I it is good to have uh, vector data and then land class textures and mesh I if you are flying in mountainous area uh, because it's quite necessary mm, to make successful VFR navigation or you can buy whole region uh, where you are flying and that would be more detailed than, than the default data from your sim uh, okay, the first, uh, first step that you would take you can export this plan to your simulation at the beginning when you, you will be learning this navigation it is very useful so during the flight you can always turn on your GPS and cheat a little bit so uh, you, you can know how to return to your route or if you are flying good or, or in the wrong direction but later you can skip that step so it would be more challenging and more rewarding when y you will be executing successful flight <coughs> okay mm, next thing is to take your map with you for flying it means that either you will print it uh, or uh, if you have uh, aviation map you can copy this data to mm, to your map um, or if if you have laptop you can put it just next to you with this program running and with this map open so you can always take a quick look at the map uh, you should also print pilot's flight plan with all the uh, navigation uh, calculations here because you will be using that mm, also to make notes here with with uh, timings mm, and so on uh, to mm, keep uh, things organized mm, you can uh, if you have some extra money you can <coughs> buy mm, the VFR new board so as you <coughs> sorry <coughs> so uh, as you can uh, see you can uh, strap it to your leg and uh, put uh, the flight plan over here uh, you have the place for a ball pen you can uh, write notes over here over some airports charts and so on so on it's it's very useful to keep things organized uh, in the air okay so mm, just before taking the route you need to familiar yourself uh, with the uh, terrain that you will be flying over what does it mean? Um, it means that you uh, you just take a, a look uh, over the area that that you are flying. Uh, so you know that you will be passing river over here. You know that th there wouldn't be any forest here, but it's more like um, like fields that you will be passing. You know that here would be some some town and so on so on mm. and it's also pretty important during that step uh, to take your time and think w what you would do if you get lost uh, for for example if you are in this area and and you you got lost somewhere over here so you can see that here is the Vistula river so you can always go back west uh, reach this river and go north follow this to find this point and maybe go back or you just use uh, four radials to navigate uh, to your airport or you can climb up for a bigger altitude to have a better view of your terrain or in the real world you can also ask your controller mm, flight information service uh, for vector to nearest uh, city or or something like that unfortunately it is not available in this sim okay so um, how to execute um, the flight itself and the navigation 
first just after you take off you just write in your flights plan the departure time and then uh, you, you see that you will reach your first whiskey waypoint after eight minutes so you will put here uh, the, the time estimated time of arrival so if you just take off at 10 a.m. you will put here 8 past 10 a.m. and you start following this uh, heading 082 basic principle is that you always try to keep your heading even if you think you're lost and there will be really many situ situations sorry, that you will think you are lost or you are unsure where you are but um, but if you would start uh, to making meaningless turns you would uh, finally get really lost and just worsen your situation so if you keep your heading always and for example you are a little bit to the south you can uh, if you reach, uh, r reach the river uh, you can follow it north and find the bridge here and just continue following uh, following uh, route mm. and also if, if, if you are totally lost and there is no rivers no landmarks or any distinguished area you can always make a 180 degrees turn and just go back and at some point you will just find yourself back uh, and uh, you can continue the route or just go back to the airport it's also an option okay so you just reach uh, this point here so you put down actual time of arrival here and if this time is different uh, than your estimate time arrival it means that your ground speed is different and this could mean that the wind data that you put over here uh, is incorrect so for example if it take nine minutes more to re reach this point you know that the wind was stronger because here you had your headwind mostly almost no crosswind so this is quite uh, quite valuable information for you because you will know that you would reach those points and also the other waypoint here um, later so you you follow uh, this leg at heading 107 uh, and you reach this mm, landmark this city after seven minutes let's say so it tells you that, uh, as I said, the wind was stronger, and um, you, and also you will now you can calculate that you will reach this position after four minutes more because it's um, roughly forty percent here of of loss. So this will be af after fourteen minutes, and also uh, you will reach, of course, this waypoint. Uh, later you can calculate this time so this is why landmarks are very useful and also they can mm, provide you with s mm, they can let you to roughly guess your position because okay you just wrote down that you were at this point um, at 9 past 10 so if it's uh, 12 past 10 you know that you are roughly somewhere here because you know that you will reach this later so you can um, you, you can guess your position and just you know just compare it with your map with everything that you see around mm, okay w we'll continue in the next part